My name's Joanne and I'm here with my teammates today from the NWMO to talk a little bit about our project and the relationship our project has with water. The NWMO is responsible for the implementation of Canada's plan for the long-term safe management of Canada's used nuclear fuel. The whole purpose of our plan is really to protect people and the environment. NWMO has made a commitment to interweave Indigenous knowledge into all of its work. Water is a great opportunity for us to be able to interweave those knowledge systems as Indigenous people have a lot of knowledge about water. Our Indigenous people see water as Mother Earth's lifeline. So it's really important for us to understand what our role is with regards to how we protect Mother Earth, how we protect water, and I think it's really important to incorporate that worldview into our project to ensure that we're doing things in a good way. My experience working in the communities is that people have a very visceral connection with water. We understand how important it is to our bodies, to our life, to the environment. People intuitively understand how water works in their environment. We often hear water is life. We start looking at water very early in our project. It's a really important thing to look at even when we're looking at, for example, site investigations because we know that in understanding the water around those sites and the quality and, and where it's flowing is a really important way that we can actually protect the environment and we can make good decisions in our drilling program and our site investigation program so that we really minimize any kind of change we bring to it. Water really drives a lot of our repository design at the NWMO, right from what we look for when we're selecting the geosphere that we would construct a repository in, so looking for a deep subsurface environment with very little water and very slow water movement, right through to the engineered barrier system where we have all of these multiple barriers acting together to really minimize water movement. It's important for us that we're in an environment where water is moving very slowly um, because the repository is being built to contain and isolate, so we're really looking for, for an environment where movement of water uh, is very slow to facilitate that containment and isolation. When we're studying the geosphere for a repository, we can see different layers of groundwater. And generally speaking, we can think of groundwater as uh, shallow, intermediate, and deep zones of water. So shallow groundwater is sort of from ground surface down to about 100 or 150 meters. When you start going deeper than that, so into the intermediate zone, down to about 350 meters below ground, uh, the pathways are starting to get smaller, there's less water, and then when you get even deeper than that into the deep subsurface where we're looking at for a repository, the pathways are really narrow and disconnected, and so water is moving very, very slowly uh, at those depths, and there's very little water. At a site that the NWMO would consider suitable for a repository, the water that's in the deep subsurface is disconnected from the surface water cycle, and it's been disconnected for millions or even billions of years. We can think of water as having a memory. Uh, for example, if you take a water sample and, and send it to a lab to be analyzed, they're looking at the minerals that are dissolved in that water, the chemistry of the water, which is really telling us information about what that water has been exposed to, so the kinds of rock it's been in contact with. And so really we can think of that as water telling us and sharing its memory as we're doing those chemical analysis. Within Indigenous Worldview, we also believe that um, everything Mother Earth created, they all have spirit and we see them as alive. When we think of things of being alive, we think that they have memory and they pass those teachings down to us. And so with the idea that water has memory, it passes those teachings down to us. To understand water in the local environment, we really need to talk to people because we can bring in scientists and biologists and engineers to look at the flow and the quality, but it's also that knowledge that's been passed down through generations, uh, that knowledge of being on the water, using the water, and really having that connection that brings a lot of value to our work. So we do a lot of work by talking to the community listening to how they use the environment, what their questions are about it, and when we move into baseline monitoring, we're going to use that information to actually design our program. I think it's really important as we start working with communities and deciding how we implement this project, whether it's the water or the land itself, is that Indigenous people in their worldview is incorporated into the planning phase to ensure that we're making good decisions for future generations.